All right, so today I'm going to make a safe zone. A lot of people have been asking for it over the years. I've never made one, and they're not that hard. So I shoot him out here. Boom, he gets hurt. Then he goes and runs in the safe zone. He can't hurt me if he's in the safe zone. I can't hurt him if he's in the safe zone. So I'm setting this up for weapons. It would just... It would be just as easy to extend it out to monsters and things like that. But let's go ahead and get started. We'll get our safe zone for our game. It'll be pretty cool. I have an empty base plate right here, and we're gonna do most of the coding in the safe zone, but we're gonna have to make a small modification to the weapons. And it's gonna be pretty easy to do. Once you do one, you'll see how to modify the weapon. But just to keep things consistent, I'll put this link in the description use this weapon until you know how to do it or if you feel pretty confident you can go ahead and use your own this will say get model if you don't have this weapon go ahead and press it then you can get it in roblox studio open up your toolbox go to inventory and what did i say something like simple pistol let's see if the let's see if the search works today ah uh, yeah simple pistol with creator tag i'll use this one because that's the one i put the link in the description for. Yep, all right. And I'll just go ahead and drag that down to the starter pack so we don't have to fumble around for it when we're doing our coding and testing. We have to make a slight modification to our pistol. We have to be able to turn it on and off, whether we're in the safe zone or not. But you might want this for other things in your game too, like in between rounds. You don't kill people in between the rounds or something. So let's go to our starter pack pistol, open that up, and you're gonna find a server script where damage is done for a weapon. You might have to search for it. Mine's easy, it says damage. So we're gonna open that up. At the top of the script, we're gonna add a variable for the collection service. Local, CS for collection service, gain, get service, collection service. Now we're gonna have tags that can turn our gun on and off. And I still want it to go bang and everything even when it's off, I just don't want it to hurt anybody. So in the on shoot on this weapon, we have our take damage. This is what we're gonna have to turn on and off, this take damage, and it should be on all weapons uh, or else it might be like health set to zero or something, but take damage is the preferred way. If you do take damage, or even set the health, you're gonna have a humanoid. Make sure the humanoid exists. After you check to see if the humanoid exists, do another if statement and say if not collection service has tag, we're gonna be tagging the characters with our safe tag. So hume.parent is a character. If you have a humanoid, you got the parent, which is the character. Then we're gonna check for a safe tag. So if not safe tag, then just do business like normal. I'm gonna put the end statement down here. So all three of these lines will be in my if statement. Let's format our document. That's looking good. Now we also wanna make sure that if we're in a safe zone, we can't hurt somebody even if they're outside of the safe zone. That wouldn't be cool. We're in a safe zone taking pot shots at people walking by. So what I wanna do is get the character from the player that's shooting. So with our creator tag, this is our shooter, and then this humanoid right here is the shooty, right? So to get this character, let's see, I can do it. I can do it right after we check to see if the target exists. Let's go ahead and make a variable for the character, right? This is the shooter character. We'll say char player dot character or player dot character added weight, just in case the character's still loading up and you start shooting and it's successful. That's just a precautionary. Let's go to our if statement and we're gonna copy this, control C, and we'll do an and. So both of these conditions have to be correct. Let's do a control V to paste. And this is going to be the character, right? So if you have a save tag, you can't fire. I'll put this on the next line so you can see it all. All right, that's just to make sure things are even. So the person who has a save tag can't hurt anybody, and the person who has a save tag can't get hurt. 
All right, now we're good to go. Let's go over to our bass plate, and I'm gonna do this a lot like I did with the regional music. We're gonna create a, a bounding box, and then we'll use the get part bounds in box. I'm gonna need a part. I have my collisions up here on so that the parts don't fall through the ground when I make them bigger. There you go, I have my part. It's here. Let's call that safe zone. Safe zone. All right, I'm gonna make it bigger. So we'll go down to size, maybe you make it 50 by 12 by 50. All right, well you don't wanna, we don't want it opaque, we actually want it totally transparent, which is one, but maybe let's make it 0.75 while we're working on it. I think I'm gonna turn the cast shadows off. Cast shadows off, just so that we don't have any shadows and stuff. All right, I'm also going to turn can collide off because we want to be able to run in and out of it. We don't even want to, we don't even want to know it's there. Maybe put like a fence up or something. I put a floor for the demo. Turn anchored on so it doesn't fall through the floor when your game starts. Now on the safe zone, let's hit the plus sign. We're going to add a script. We'll do the server side. And we'll call this uh, something like keep safe. Keep safe. In keep safe, we're gonna need some variables. Let's get a variable for the safe zone itself. Safe zone equals script.parent. And then I want the C frame for the safe zone. I'm gonna call this box C frame. And we'll say safe zone dot C frame. And I need the size of the box. Local box size equals safe zone size and we need we need the collection service for our tagging so i'll say local cs for collection service game get service collection service and i'm also going to get the player service so i'll say local players equals game get service players let's make a function to check to see if players are in the zone so i'll say local function check the zone and we'll pass in a player the player that we're checking i'm going to need a variable called found we're going to start out at false that's if the player is in the zone we're going to get a parts list from workspace get part bounds in box and we're gonna need a C frame for that. So we have our box C frame. That's the safe zone C frame. And we got our box size. We need the size. And then this overlap params, they don't really work very well. So I'll just do nil. There we go. And that's to limit the search, but it's uh, kind of hit and miss on that. Let's do a for loop. And I'm gonna use the underscore because I'm not gonna use the first variable, the I, the counter. I'm just gonna get the parts. So for underscore comma parts in pairs. Oh, you know what? I don't want to call that parts because I want to call this parts. Do. Let me just change that. Each one of those parts is a part. How's that? That doesn't mess you up, does it? All right. So each one of these parts will be a part. And then we're going to check those parts. I'm going to say if part dot parent dot name equals equals player.name, so we're gonna check. We're gonna check to see if the part's parent, like a foot or something like that, is the player name. If it is, we're gonna say found. Found equals true. And then we'll break. We don't have to check more parts. They're already in the box. All right, so we need a little bit more. Let's go to this end right here, not quite at the end, not the end end, but the second to the end end. And then I'm going to look for the character that should be associated with the player. So I'll say character equals player dot character, but I'm not gonna do a character added weight because I don't wanna tie up my script. If the character's not fully in the game, that's all right, we're gonna skip over them. So I'll say if the char, if the character's there, then let's check if found, right? Are they in the box? If they are in the box, let's add a tag and we'll say char safe 
right? Else, not in the box, CS, remove tag, char, safe. All right, so they're gonna have either a safe tag or not a safe tag, depending if they're in the box or not in the box. Now we need to call that function. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna do a while loop. So I'll say a while true do. This will run while the game, while the server is running. And we'll do every 0.5 seconds. Every half seconds is, that's plenty time for update. So we'll do a for I and player in pairs using the players service. Well, we need the players in the player service. So we'll say get children do check the zone player. So every half a second, we're going to go through the players in the game. We're going to check the zone tag or untag players in the game based on whether they're in the zone or not. And it's not really that resource intensive. It's not too bad. Let's go ahead and try it out and see if we are successful. I'm going to use the test server. Get two players in there. Each will have a gun and we'll try it out. I'll pause the video because that's going to take a minute or two to start up. All right, so here we go. Safe zone's right behind us. Let me pull out my pistol. Try shooting my other guy there. And now he's gonna run in. I'm gonna try and shoot him again. Ah, look at that. Nothing. Can I hit him? Nothing. But if I run out, I can hit him and he can hit me. So we got a safe zone. That's pretty cool. 